preach today from this subject hear me out today Sodom past present and future father may we do no damage but preach that which becomes sound doctrine in Jesus name amen Sodom past present and future I want to begin this message by saying that the simple reading of these passages that the Holy Spirit directed me to read to you shows that whether it is Old Testament or New, that the God of the Bible has not changed his mind. There seems to be much confusion in the world, in social media, in families, in denominations, in the church of God in Christ, the Methodist church, with the multitude of paper tigers that are on the internet, with the text warriors, so forth and so on, about an issue that is dealt with in Scripture in a total black and white, right or wrong, moral or immoral way in Scripture. It is the issue of same-sex attractions. Same-sex sex. sex. People who have sex with people who are of the same sex. Or try to have sex with people who are of the same sex. These actions are described in the Bible. And every time they are described in the Bible, they are also denounced. In every instance where they are mentioned, they are mentioned as a pejorative. It's never mentioned euphemistically. There's never any praise heaped. But it's always a cautionary tale or an outright denunciation. For example, in Leviticus 18 and 22, one of the words used to describe this act or this action is the word lie. L-I-E. Leviticus 11 and 22 says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. The word lie literally means sexual intercourse. It is denounced in Leviticus as an abomination. Any abominating thing or act is something that is Disgusting, loathing, vile, and very bad. An abomination is never called a good thing. Leviticus 20 and uh, 13 says, If a man lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. That's the Bible. Another passage um, that describes this act or these actions, I pray that you would hear me today. I don't know if we'll shout. We may. Is an example that's given in the book of Judges. And the word that is given is the word no, K-N-O-W. Judges 19 and 22, you'll find the last clause where wicked men said this, bring forth the man, 
that came into thine house that we may know him. The word know uh, is the Hebrew word yada. Know is to experience. Know means sexual intercourse. This is the same word know that was used in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1 when it says Adam knew Eve and she conceived. So we have the word know that describes this act that seemed to be that uh, there seems to be so much confusion in the church world today. If you read Judges 19 and 23, you'll read where uh, the, men, the man says, Nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. The act was called wickedly. Anything that is wickedly is wicked, is bad, it's wrong. Another word that the Bible used to describe this act that even the church world seems to be confused about is the word abomination. According to Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 through 50, says, Behold, this is the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her, and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. There are theologians who say that the sin of Sodom was not same-sex sex. They say that it was that they did not help the poor, that they didn't help the needy, that they were proud, and uh, that they were not hospitable. And they cite Ezekiel 16 and 49 as proof. I guess they assume that you won't read verse 50. The very next verse. Verse 50 says, And they were haughty and committed abominations, abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Abomination comes from a Hebrew word that describes ceremonial uncleanliness, idolatry, child sacrifice, same-sex sexual relations, and, basic, and uh, basically to identify any major offense. It's called an abomination. Another word that is used to describe this act or actions is the word unseemly. We just read it. Romans 1 and 27 says, men with men working that which is unseemly. Unseemly comes from a Greek word which means indecent, uncommonly, deformity. Shame, embarrassment, called it unseemly. Bear with me. Another word that we get from the Bible that describes even this craving or desire is the word vile. Romans 1 and 26 says, For this cause God gave them up to vile affection. The word vile means dishonor, disgrace, shameful. Another word used to describe, by the way, I'm in the New Testament, this manner of thought or thinking is the word reprobate. Romans 1 and 28 says, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. The word reprobate literally means worthless, spurious, which is false, counterfeit. It is disapproved. It is rejected. Amen. Are you with me? And yet another word to describe these actions and acts that seem in these times in which we live to be controversial is the word convenient. 
Romans 1 and 28, the B clause says, uh, gave them up to do those things which are not convenient. That is, things that are not fitting. Things that are not benefiting. Things that are unnecessary. Not becoming. Things that are improper. Things that are not right. And yet, another biblical term to describe this act uh, is a phrase. We find this phrase in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, and it's called abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusers of themselves with mankind describes a man having sex with another man. It is abuse to his own body and mind. The word abuse is a word that uh, it was not original. It, is, um, it used to be, uh, the word was, the phrase was abnormal use. And over time, we just shortened and pulled them together and just said abuse. When a man has sex with a man, it is, he is abnormally using his body. Another phrase to describe this act or these actions is found in 1 Timothy chapter 1. It says in verse 10, well let's read 9 and 10, says, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, murderers in general, for whoremongers. A monger is a seller. A whoremonger is a pimp or a prostitute. For them that defile themselves with mankind as men who have sex with men. For man stealers, kidnappers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. And it seems to me in all this litany of behaviors that are denounced as wrong, only one of them have been sought to be made legal. Still another term that describes and denounces this act we find in Jude. And the, the term was strange flesh. When they saw the angels come, where strange flesh means other or different, they thought the angels were new men, new flesh to get with. Now I have just given you ten words without a hoop, without a holler, without a tune. I've just given you 10 words or phrases in the Bible that describes same sex sex. It describes the activity as being illegal, ungodly, and unlawful. The words are lie, no, abomination, unseemly, vile, reprobate, convenient, as in not convenient, abusers of themselves with mankind defile themselves with mankind, strange, strange flesh, and also there's an 11th one that I meant to add. Uh, the Bible says this, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Romans 1 and 26. So to add to the list, let's add against nature is another description. Against nature Ladies simply means not normal. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to be saved. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to attend anyone's church. You don't have to be a member of Upper Room to know that it's unnatural for two women to get together sexually. Just by the physical design, you weren't made to please each other that way. It's against nature. Let me turn a corner. The first printing of the Bible 
was in 1454 A.D. Jonas Gutenberg, who invented the type mold, and the infamous, the famous Gutenberg Press, he was the one that invented the type mold for pressing. And by the way, the first book that was ever printed in existence was the Bible. First book ever printed in 1454. The first translation of the Bible into English was in 1382 by John Wycliffe. 1382. The Bible was first translated. 1454. The Bible was first, had its first printing. 1382. First translated into English. 1454. Its first printing. 413 years after the Bible was first printed. And 486 years after the Bible was translated into English, Carl Maria Kurt Benny, 14, 414 years after the Bible was first printed. And 486 years after the Bible was translated into English. Carl Maria Kurt Bene. Did I say after the Bible? Did I say that? Did I say after it was first printed and after it was translated. 400 years, 400 plus years later, Carl Maria Kurt Bene, a German, an early sex law reformer, coined a new term called homosexual 14 400 years after the bible was printed 400 some odd years after the bible was translated a phrase a word was made up called homosexual and he also coined the term heterosexual and there were two other sexual terms that he coined that are no longer used the fact that Kurt Bene coined the word 414 years after the Bible was first printed and 486 years after the Bible was first translated in English could have, for all you smart people out there, something to do with the fact that the word homosexual is not found in the Bible. Could it be that the reason the word homosexual is not found in the Bible was that the word had not yet been invented? It came along 400 and some odd years too late. But I just gave you 11 terms that describe homosexuality and the 11 I gave you weren't all I just got tired I had to go home I said God the Holy Spirit you wear me out I can't keep up with you sir he's so thorough so thorough are you following me It could be for those out there who posts where you can't find the word homosexual in the Bible. I agree with you. But you find homosexuality. You find the action. You find the behavior. You find it described in Scripture and every time it is described, it is denounced. Old and New Testament. A 
according to Carl M. Kurtbany, homosexuality referred to erotic sex performed by men with men and women with women. Amen. Let me move on. I'm almost done. The word sodomy or Sodom. I'm headed to my text. Uh, it's from an unused root meaning to scorch. The word Sodom literally means burning. Burning. Sodom was a Canaanite city usually paired with Gomorrah located in the Dead Sea. Where word Sodom appears 39 times in the King James Version of the Bible. Sodom as a noun refers to wicked or corrupt place. A wicked or corrupt place. Sodom. Sodomy, a 13th century word used to describe unnatural sexual relations. Such as those imputed to the inhabitants of Sodom especially between persons of the same sex, but also with beasts. Bestiality is covered in, the, in, in Sodom, Sodomy. The Sodomite, the 14th century, it was a, a phrase that meant the inhabitants of Sodom but Sodomite can't only be used as the inhabitants of Sodom. Sodomite describes the sexually immoral. The Sodomite describes the homosexual. How do you know, preacher? First Kings chapter 15 and verse 12 says, speaking of uh, King Asa, says, and he took away the Sodomites out of the land. And removed all the idols that his father had made. Now we find uh, Asa in 1 Kings 15 and 12. Read it when you get home. Uh, uh, we find him removing Sodomites from the land approximately 527 years after Sodom was destroyed. Oh, the city was destroyed 500 years prior. So there couldn't have been anybody there in Judah who was from Sodom. And yet they were called Sodomites. So that means Sodomites doesn't simply mean from Sodom. But it describes a behavior or a lifestyle. For by the time Asa did this, Sodom had been underwater for 527 years. The city was destroyed, but the behavior survived. Ah, hence, the Sodom past, present, and future. And uh, if you read 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 7, you see the actions of the mighty king, Josiah. The Bible says, and he break down the house of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord. Isn't it amazing? Even back then, praise the Lord, uh, some 799 years after God had destroyed Sodom, destroyed the city, even 799 years later, you find the Sodomites trying to work their way into the house of God. always try to connect themselves to the church. Always try to get into God's house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, you, you out there, you accuse us of being judgmental when our crime is preaching the Bible. And preaching the Bible 
contextually. And I say for those who may disagree with me, disagree with me according to scripture. Post where I am biblically incorrect. Show me where I have improperly exegeted the text. Whether you like me or not is irrelevant. Whether you attend the church is irrelevant. Whether you know this or that about this person or the other is irrelevant. The, the, the question is, are we wrong scripturally? If I'm wrong, then Josiah was wrong. If I'm wrong, then King Asa was wrong. If I'm wrong, then Paul was wrong. If I'm wrong, then the Bible is wrong. And we all know that the Bible, well, most of us, we know that the Bible is right. The late, great G. Patterson said, I know the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. Good God Almighty. Sodom had been destroyed for 799 years. And yet we find the body Josiah breaking down the house of the sodomites i'm getting ready to land this plane and then if you move forward past today and go into the future we see revelations 13 where even then you will see these warriors for the lord we'll see the warriors in the streets I'm sorry, it's Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom spiritually means sexual perversion and homosexuality, bestiality. Uh, Egypt uh, is a type for the world. Jerusalem, Jerusalem will be in a backslidden condition much as she is today. We pray for Jerusalem. But oh, Jerusalem is it, the holy land, but there's a lot of wickedness in the holy land. In our text, we see, praise the Lord, uh, these angels going down to visit Sodom. Deacon Miller, somebody said that the sin of Sodom was that they were inhospitable, that they didn't care about the poor, and that's why the angels destroyed the city. But let's, let's uh, uh, test that argument. According to the text, the angels didn't get there until that evening. Lot took them straight to his house. The men came to the house. They had a confrontation. And then the angels had Lot and his family to leave early the next morning. So if it was that the sin of Sodom was that they, that they didn't care for the poor. And, and, and that was the problem. Then will somebody please tell me when did the angels have time to even find out? They got there that evening. They were gone the next day, early the next morning. So don't you think it would take a minute because Lot, Lot, Lot was not in the poor section. Lot sat in the gate of the city. He sat where the rulers were, where the aristocrats, where the muckety muck. And, and, and uh, praise the Lord, uh, uh, Sodom was a beautiful city. Well watered, well manicured, an advanced city. Oh, yeah. Y'all stop being moved when you see uh, homosexuals who are intelligent, who are inventors, who are smart, who can sing, who can do these things. Of course they can. God has blessed people of every stripe to be intelligent and smart. But just because you're smart, intelligent, or athletic, that doesn't make you right. There are, there are behaviors that God, not Patrick Wooden, it didn't start with the upper room. It won't end with the upper room. It didn't start with me. It won't end with me. The God of the Bible said, thou shall not lay with mankind as with womankind. And if you do so, it is an abomination. God said that. 
And then the cry, the cry, the cry reached heaven. And now God sent some angels and they stopped by Abraham's house. When Abraham saw him, he said, come on in. Oh yeah, come on in and let's dine. Abraham sat in the plane of memory and uh, sat in his tent door and he lifted his eyes. And the Bible says in uh, Genesis 18 and verse 2, said Abraham saw three men. Mm -hmm. said come on in to my house and while they were there you knew something was going on because they brought up something that they had no way of knowing they said your wife Sarah she's going to have a child and uh, Sarah laughed and got in trouble with God and said uh, you don't laugh because God's going to make it happen the promise has been for a long time, but it's still going to happen. And the, the, the next day they got ready to leave and they had a discussion. They said, do you think we should tell Abraham what we're getting ready to do? And they decided because he's God's man and God's going to make him the father of many nations, we're going to let him know what we're about to do. They said, Abraham, the cry, a cry, an outcry from Sodom have been made. And uh, we're going down to Sodom and see if the city is as wicked as the cry is. Kind of reminds me of what happened when Moses was on the mountaintop. Good God Almighty, there's God said you better get down uh, to this mountain because the people are making a strange noise. Oh Lord, from so many churches today, there's a strange noise. But I wonder today, is there anybody here who still love Jesus, who still know that the God of the Bible is real and that holiness is right? And if you're not ashamed, let me hear you say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. And they said, we're going down to see if it's as bad as they said. And they went down there. Two angels arrived. It took them to, till, till evening. But one of the things that slowed them down was Abraham. Abraham said, listen, I got a nephew down there. I'm going to ask you a question. Let me make a proffer to you. If you find 50 righteous in the city, will you spare the city? The angel said, yes, we'll spare the city if we can find 50 righteous. And Abraham said, good. Well, what will happen if you find, good God almighty, 40 righteous? Will you spare the city? Just 40 righteous. And they said yes. And Abraham went all the way down to 10 righteous. They said, now we ain't going no lower. Now we got to go. And they walked on down. It took them all day long. In the cool of the evening, they came to Sodom. Oh, Lord. And as they walked in, one of them uh, went on off. I'm going to Gomorrah. You two check out Sodom, and I'll check out Gomorrah. And they went to Sodom, and Lot sat there with his rich self, with his powerful self. But the Bible lets me know that Lot was vexed. His soul was harassed. The New Testament said he was vexed by seeing the day-to-day -day conversation of the wicked. The word vex means irritated. We're living in a time where they're trying to vex us. Let me prophesy. Can I prophesy? Let me prophesy. Let me prophesy. I want it on record that I said, I want to tell you where we're headed. Somebody say, prophesy, preacher. Let me prophesy. It's not how 
good God almighty that you disagree with homosexuality. That's not where we're headed. It's not, it's not that, that we disagree. It's not how we stage or how we speak our disagreement. But it is that we disagree. The devil is where, where society is moving. You can disagree and use no slang. You can disagree and use proper language. You can disagree and say what the Bible says and they'll still come against you. Call you a homophobe. Call you a name. Come against you because you had the audacity to tell the truth. You can praise the Lord. Use their own terms. Drop the F word. Don't even call them faggots. Say they're gay, but say you disagree and they get mad anyway. Why? Because it's the devil and the thought police and the devil is trying to harass us and to make us afraid. But I stand here to tell you that the more you push, the more we'll push back. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yeah! Oh, Lord! Somebody praise him! If you know what I'm talking about. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Now let's go one higher. Tell your neighbor, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the Bible, the whole Bible, all of the Bible. Say it! Ah, yeah! Ah, yeah! Went down there and uh, the Lord, when Lot saw them, he ran up to them. He said, come and abide in my house. Look at the hospitality of this city leader. He was hospitable, he was harassed, but he saw that these men were somebody special. It could have been that they walk like men. Could it been that they talk like men? Now let me tell you something for those of you who said wouldn't we apologize we thought that you and your minister of music was judging a young man because he appeared to be homosexual only to find out that the man was lying because he is that any man that put a picture of himself on the internet and say of himself, I'm standing here with a t-shirt and panties on. Men don't wear panties. Men don't wear panties. Men wear boxers. Men wear briefs. Men wear drawers. We don't wear panties. Yeah! Yeah! Ah, yeah! Don't, don't, don't get me started. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But let me say this, even if it would have turned out that the young man was indeed straight, and even if it would have turned out that the young lady who lied through her teeth sitting in the car with a woman purported to be a, either her girlfriend or wife, even if they would have been straight, let me tell you something. The Bible speaks against effeminacy. A man is not supposed to present himself in an effeminate manner. And a man don't have to be homosexual to be disqualified. If he's effeminate, he is disqualified from leading praise and worship. He can come to church, he can get on the altar, he can participate in service, but he ain't leading nothing. He's welcome to come, but he can't lead because you got to be holy, you got to be right. 
say yeah, yeah, oh Lord, oh Lord, I feel like preaching, oh Lord, and let me tell you something women, let me tell you straight women something, look, don't you adapt that butch look, hallelujah, sometimes people have hair problems, sometimes People have scap issues. Sometimes people are recovering from cancer. Sometimes a lady just like a, a lower cut. But there's a difference between a low cut and a manly cut. There's a difference between wearing your hair in a short do and wearing your hair like I do. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. It's time to cry loud and spare not. I have no fear because I'm already dead. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not, not I, but Christ who lives in me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody push back. Don't you mess with us. Yeah! 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 Ow! God Almighty, Lot brought him in and fed them. He was very hospitable. He was better to those men than Simon was to Jesus. When Jesus went to his house and the prostitute came and washed his feet with her hands, that they had a problem with her, Jesus said, but when I came to your house, Simon, you didn't wash my feet. You didn't give me any of the customary treatments. These men came in, they were treated very royally and very respectfully. And then... Hey! Look! Look! Hey! Send those men. We saw them. Send those men who came to your house. Send them out. Bring them out to us because we want to have sex with them. The word was no. King James. We want to yada them. I won't get no more descriptive than that. Because church got to be rated G. That's what they wanted. And Lot, being a gentleman, sorry, they're talking about inhospitable, being a gentleman, stepped out the house, left the guys in, being a gentleman, being kind. See, with some people you can't win. Instead of, instead of getting right, you will try to stand, you will try to defend the indefensible. Or you're gonna be left out by yourself. Lot, Lot stepped out and said, Brothers, don't do this. Don't. He called, unlike certain political people who say, a person should be able to love whoever they want to love. As long as you love, love is love. K Jewelers then got into it. BMW, all the corporations, they're going that way. Praise the Lord. You should be able to love who you want to love. Lot said, in 1400, around 1440 BC, Lot said, this is wicked. And, and, and you know, uh, listen, them angels could have been the first 
members of the Me Too movement. Because had they had their way, them brothers would have been saying, Me Too. And uh, Lot said, Don't do that. He said, This is wicked. Don't do that. And you know what they said? We let you come. See all you who, who let them fix your hair. Amen. Fix your hair. Sell your hats and outfits. Oh boy. Fix your eyes. You sitting there. All right. Getting you together. You sitting there trying. Yeah. They said to him, We let you come and we let you live with us. Now. See, because Lot, see, you know what Lot did? You know what Lot did? Lot did like most preachers do. When Lot went there, Lot never spoke against it. Now, Lot himself never participated in it, but he never spoke against it. See, he, he, he figured out how to prosper. See, 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 wouldn't, see, see, if you, see, man, see. See, now, if you want to grow your church, see, 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 you want your church to grow. If you, if you want folk to, you want, you want certain, you want to get in certain doors. Boy, I'm so sick of that word. You want to get in doors. Well, God opened doors for you. See, see, there's certain things you can't talk about, see, and you get doors open. There's another door you have open, the door to hell. For what you didn't say. For what you didn't say and for what you wouldn't say. And you know, speaking of love, I heard the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says somebody is saying that you don't sound loving. Let me tell you something. If if I am not loving, then um, the public service announcements against cigarettes aren't loving either. Cigarettes, on average shortens the human lifespan on average 10 to 13 years. So, don't smoke. <sighs> Homosexuality. Homosexuals live on average of 20 years less than their heterosexual counterparts. So, that lifestyle is worse on the human body than smoking is. But we warn people about the dangers of smoking. And in, and in some public schools now, they're teaching kids how to participate in homosexuality. Now, does that make any sense to you? And if it does, somebody come get the mic and explain it. We, we streaming it out. I, I open the mic. Come up here. If you're going to try to stop a behavior that will shave 10 to 13 years off your lifespan on average, human lifespan, why would you endorse one that shaves 20 years off? And this was pre-AIDS. See? It's, it's, it's not good. It's not good. So Lot said, that's why Lot called it wicked. Somebody said the average age death for a male is 39 years. I'm, 50, I'm 57. 39. Listen, at 39, you feel like you just got here. You ain't nobody ready to die at no 39. I ain't ready to die at 57. Mother, I feel good. I got a whole lot of life. I feel good. I feel good. I got my, got my strength. I got my energy. I enjoy life. I can see. I feel good. I keep Pam happy. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I ain't anybody ready to die at that age. If you can help it, if you can help it, why would you engage in something? Why get into something? Why not come out? I have given you a scriptural presentation. And I have intentionally framed it where 
I wanted to give you ammunition. Yes, because sometimes, well, it's, it's, you can't find that word in the Bible. That's because the Bible was canonized and printed before the word was invented. But you find the activity described and condemned and denounced in both Old and New Testament. Now if, you, now, if you want to go against the Bible, then that's a different conversation. Well, well I don't sub, 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 subject to biblical authority. Okay, that's a different conversation. Now I got to talk to you about why you should. But if you claim to, you preachers out there who claim, how are you going to claim that and then not preach it? So they, Lot, then when Lot finally spoke up, they said, you know what? We're going to do worse to you than we thought to do to them. Now notice how they described their own sexual acts. They said we will do worse. Now they didn't say we're going to blow your mind a lot. We're going to rock your world. When we get through with you you're going to be craving us. None of that. No. You're going to do we're going to do worse to you than we thought to do to them. That tells you right there it was wrong. And the angel, and they were getting ready to do it too. And the angels reached out and pulled Lot in, and they blinded the men. And the men wearied themselves, still trying to find a door. And the Bible says this. That the, the, the angel asked them, says, uh, do you have anyone else besides these? He said, well, I got my, my daughters, which he had offered his daughters. That's another whole, that's, that's a good men's day teaching. That's right. See, that's now I understand Eastern hospitality. And I understand that you go to every length to keep your guests from being mistreated. But I wouldn't offer my daughter. I wouldn't offer my daughter. I wouldn't offer your daughter. I wouldn't offer any, any woman to be. And, and then told them, do what seemeth good in your eyes. Her body would have never functioned again properly after those men would have gotten finished with her. That tells you right there. See, that tells you right there. Sin doesn't just affect those who participate in it. It affects those who are indifferent. See, when you're quiet, let me, let me help you. When you're quiet, you're changing. You just don't know it. See, three or four more years, Lot would have been one of them. Because if you can offer your daughter, it won't, give him six more months. No right-thinking man. Every, every father here, with a man with a daughter or a child, let me see your hand. You want to offer, it, that's unconscionable. Well, pastor, our cultures are different. Not, they are, but you don't find nobody offering her uh, but Lot. That's right. That's right. That's right. David wouldn't offer his daughters. No, and so he asked, who do you have? He says, I have my daughters. Which, by the way, he had two sons-in-law. See, sometimes we put the S behind the word law. It's sons-in-law. He said, I have two sons-in-law. And, um, but his daughters had not known man. If you have any question, sister, any question, any, seriously, I'm very, I'm very serious, any ifs, any questions, you got to make sure those questions are answered. You got to make sure those objections are dealt with because the alternative is you could have been end up like Lot's daughters and they were messed up. They, they were not pure. In fact, the whole family was messed up. And you know who messed them up? Lot did. You know why Lot messed them up? He didn't listen to Abraham. He should have humbled himself to Abraham. 
So you got to go all the way back. It, he, they would have never been there had he went to the man who made him and said, you know what? I'll handle my herdman and we'll get along because I wouldn't have a thing had you not helped me. Oh no, being big ninja got him in trouble. And he moved his family down there. And I'll show you how messed up his daughters and his wife and his family was. The Bible said when Lot came to them, the angel said, we got to leave early in the morning. When Lot came to them and said, we got to leave, the Bible says he sounded like one that mocked. They thought he was joking. Now, two things there. Number one, that means their ears was messed up. But number two, Lot lingered also. He wasn't convincing. See, they, he wasn't in a hurry to leave. He was messed up. He was in, so you can stay in sin so long that you don't want to come out. Hey, hey, and you still haven't participated yet. I like it. I like Sodom. We made the adjustment. Like people living by a place that kill hogs when you first move in, it just stinks. Stay there a year or two. You don't even smell it. Say it. So, 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 your, 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 your family member visits you. What's that smell? He said, what smell? You've been there so long till you adjusted to it. He adjusted to Sodom. And the, and the angels had to get them in a hurry. And his son and, sons-in-law didn't leave. They stayed. His daughters left. And his wife left. Now the angels told him, it ain't going to cost you a dime. All we want you to do is just don't look back. And she looked back and became a pillar of salt. Mentioned by Jesus Christ as a pejorative. You know, people said Jesus never spoke against Sodom. Yes, he did. Every time he mentioned Sodom and Gomorrah, it was as a pejorative. Never in a complimentary way. Never in a euphemistic way. It was always a pejorative. It was always a cautionary tale. It was warn them of what could be. He said, remember. He preached a sermon. Just one line. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Three words. What it takes. That'll take. She was free and looked back. See, some things you got to walk away from. You can't look back. You just can't. You just can't. You just can't. Can't look back. Can't talk back. Can't explain yourself. Can't have a conversation. Just go. Just leave. So well, let me pack my bag. Sometimes you can't even do that. Leave everything. So where are you going? With Jesus. How are you going to make? Don't know. How are you going to eat? I'll figure it out. How are you going to get along? The Lord will make a way. Somehow. She looked back and became a pillar of salt. Jesus said this, and I'm about to pray and wrap this one up. In my clothes, Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 28, I'll read it for you. It says, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought. And they sold, they planted, and they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. One day, the church being locked is going to be taken out of this world. There are some things that can't happen until the Lord takes the church out of the world. Until the church age comes to an end. And when Jesus comes and he takes us away, oh, you don't want to be an American. You don't want to be a citizen of this world when the saints of God is taken away. Because then the tribulation period will start. And if you think there are challenges now, the devil will, will be given power 
to overcome the saints. Many, many, many will die. Sodom, past, present, and future. Saints, Jesus is coming back. And let me say this. No, it is not the only sin. So preacher, you preach against homosexuality like it's the only sin. My response to those who say this to me is, you fail to preach against it. Like it's the only sin you won't preach against. So I guess we both have our onlys. But no, it's not the only sin. But it's the only one of late that we've made law. That we have legalized. Nobody's legalized adultery. Nobody's legalized fornication. Nobody's legalized murder with <clears throat> Planned Parenthood. But other than that, nobody's legalized most of all the things that, that are wrong. But in this, you see, the Bible says that the Antichrist, Daniel tells us, will not have the desire of women. That's right. That's right. See, what we're seeing is the proliferation of the Antichrist in the land, you see. And one of the manifestations is this perversion. And I don't know about you today, but I want to be kept. I want to be kept. Not just from that, I want to be kept. I want the Lord to keep me in a time like this. Would you please stand on your feet? There may be somebody here who is dealing with some things. And I understand that some things are harder than others. To come to the altar for. So therefore I won't invite you. But I do open my office open myself to you. And if you call, we'll pray for you in this particular area in particular. But I open the altar not just for this one thing, but to pray. The scripture I referenced that was too heavy to just throw out there was Daniel chapter 11 and verse 37, speaking of the Antichrist himself. Well, I'll read verse 36 and 37. It says in, of Daniel chapter 11, And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Speaking of any pre-existing religion. This is the Antichrist who is a type for Antiochus Epiphanes was a type for the Antichrist. Says, and he shall speak marvelous things, marvelous here being wicked, against the God, capital G-O-D, of gods, small G-O-D-S. That is, he's going to speak wicked things against Christianity. The religion of the God of the Bible. It's Christianity. It was Judaism until Christ. Judaism is the foundation for Christianity. Hence, Old and New Testament. Do you see how Christians are being attacked? Did you see where when Muslims have been killed? We said they, they killed 50 Muslims. They killed so many Muslims. But when the Christians were killed the other day, uh, President Obama and uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, they talked about how some people killed some Easter worshipers and tourists. 
They wouldn't even call them Christians. Let a Muslim stub their toe and we know it's a Muslim. But when Christians get killed, they don't even call them Christians. This is the spirit of Antichrist. We're seeing them beginning to speak against the God of gods. Look at this. And shall prosper. Look at this. He shall prosper in the indignation. He shall and, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. That is, till the things that he's been allowed to do be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. You can't stop it. That's why I'm going to heaven. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, which gives us the belief that the Antichrist will be Jewish, nor the desire of women. Women, he's not your friend. He won't have the desire of women, the desire for women. They're setting you up with these so-called women's issues. So-and-so is against women. No, 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 no. Because the policies that they're pushing aren't policies that are pro-women. Have you ever thought about all these women who uh, support abortion and, and they're rallying uh, I want to ask all of them, uh, do you not know that half them babies you are aborting are little girls? How are you going to be for women's rights? Planned Parenthood has, has teamed up with Black Lives Matter. The number one killer of black lives have teamed up with Black Lives Matter. Now what did I tell you about Black Lives Matter? They're as dumb as the CEO for the defunct Toys R Us. Toys R Us used to support Planned Parenthood. Toys R Us, you sell toys to children. That's the dumbest CEO ever. I'm glad they're out of business. You're going to be that stupid, you don't need a business. Somebody else will come up with a toy store. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, fathers nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. That is, he will pay no respect to any religion. He will put himself above all religions. That is what we're seeing as the world tries to bring down biblical Christianity. Raise up yoga. Raise up Islam. Raise up these other movements. Raise up these things. Raise up Buddhism. Bring down Christianity. Silence the Christians. Shame the preacher. Kill the credibility of the church. And in many ways, he's going to prosper. For that that is determined must be done. But I'm glad that Jesus is coming back for me. And he promised to bless us and promised to keep us in the meantime. Everybody's standing. I want to pray for you. One of the altar workers, I want, you to altar, I want you to work with her, one of the prayer warriors. I want to pray today because people can't pick their demons. Some people have been molested. Some people just wasn't raised right. Some folk, it was a wicked, loved one. Different things. But you, you, you battle with thoughts and urges and desires that you don't want. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, don't give in to them. Amen. That is not God. I'm here to tell you the fact that you are battling says wonderful things about you because if you would have given in, there would be no battle. See, let me tell you, you got to know how to see a thing. 
well, I'm struggling with something. Well, the fact that you are struggling says something good about you. Because sinners don't struggle. Killers don't struggle with killing. They just kill. Psychopaths don't feel bad about it at all. You're just dead. Your head is over there. Your body is over there. Blood everywhere. And he feels just as fine. No struggle. No struggle. No struggle. The fact that there's a struggle says God is in there. See, that says right there, you're on the right track. That says you can make it because there is a resistance. Paul said it. The Bible says it. The spirit lusteth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. These two are contrary one to another. So that you will not do, the Bible says, the things that you would. There is a spirit that will say, go, go left. And there is your bone against spirit saying, go right. And there's a clash between the two. Now, before you got saved, there was no clash. You just went left. You just went to the club. You just did whatever you were big enough to do before you got saved. But now that you're saved, now there's a tug of war. You just got to listen to God the Holy Ghost. That's all. That's all. You got to let go and let God have his way. And tell the devil, tell the devil, hallelujah, if it kills me, I'm not going that way. You can talk about me. You can say what you will of me. My God is a deliverer. And saints, if somebody, if somebody confides in you a struggle of such a sensitive nature, you better know that you better never violate that confidence. By disclosing that sacred trust. See, that's one thing I hate about the internet. It's creating gossipers. We we just we just gossip, 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 gossip. We we oh, a lot of people going to hell for gossiping. It's, it's oh, some of you. Oh, you, learn, you earn your living posting gossip. What you going to say when you stand before the Lord and the Lord show all that stuff you posted, all that stuff you've said, all the things that were said to you by people in confidence and you said it on the net. You, got, you told people what was said to you in private, what was spoken to you in the dark, where someone confessed it in you and you went on line and you proclaimed what are you going to say when you stand before God some of you I wouldn't tell you anything because you only hold confidences as long as the relationship is tight soon as you fall out there you go tell me I know you do how you know? Because you've told me. <laughs> and I'm telling you something. Anytime somebody brings something to me, to, to me that someone said to them at a time when things were tight and they disclose that now, all it says to me, I won't tell you, but all it says to me is never tell them something because you can't trust them. Because they told that person that they're telling that they're telling you on that I ain't gonna say nothing, no ditch up between me and you, child. And then you fell out over something unrelated. And you know what? Any man that do that, you violating man law. That's the most punk thing that you can do. It's wrong. And you know what it does? You know what it does? I'm getting ready to pray. It keeps people from coming clean. See, you can't come clean. Who are you going to come clean to? The right. Bible said, confess your faults one to another. <laughs> ain't saying nothing. 
because it may not happen today, but three years from now, there you go on the internet or wherever saying what was said to you in the strictest of confidence. Black folk don't know, I don't know about whites, but black folk don't know what confidential means. We think confidential means tell three people. <laughs> Can't tell your neighbor, tell your best friend, and tell them not to tell nobody. Knowing that they got at least three or four. So now your confidential communications have been spread to 50 people by the end of the day. And you're sitting there thinking, don't, don't nobody know. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, everybody treats you funny. You look at your friend. Did you say that? No, I ain't saying nothing. Because anybody that betray your confidence, that, you know, it don't bother them to lie. See, because they lied to you when they said they wouldn't betray it. So what's one more lie to them? That's part of the problem. That's what hurts deliverance. You, you, everybody needs somebody to be accountable to. People struggling with drinking and smoking. And they're, well, I haven't drunk, had a drink today. I haven't had a drink today. They're saving in the church. Can you be saved and struggle with drink? You can be saved and struggle with anything. You know why? Because you get saved in the flesh. The Bible says if a man says he don't have sin, he's lying. You can be saved and struggle with anything. Because the, the, the devil don't walk away just because you've been born again. Yeah, you, saints have struggles. Paul showed, described his, and people tried to put Paul's struggles in the past. This is what he meant before he got saved. No, Paul said, when I would do good. I, that which good that I would do, I do not. Now, if I do that which I would not, I must give consent that it is sin that lieth in me. Now, he said that. And he, and he spoke in the present tense. It wasn't no past tense. All people struggle and have challenges. And if somebody's struggling and they tell you, they come, listen, I've gone three days and I hadn't even had a drink. I'm getting better. Hmm, you, you, you just three days? Did, did, did you get saved last year? Well, yeah, I did. I, I did. But I'm, I'm, it, this is my lion in the cage. You can, you can walk in the store, you go, you, you sir, you can go into the store and walk right past the beer going to get some cheese and don't feel nothing. The, the alcoholic, the person struggling with drinking, walk past the beer, they hear the beer calling them. Hear, they hear, hey, hey, hey! I mean, if you grab and hold to them, that was their struggle. You can drive past the, 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 the red light district side of town and not cross your mind. But for that brother who was on drugs, that red light district calls him. At the stoplight, the devil be saying, turn right, turn right, turn right, go on down, turn left, go down there. People have various struggles. One of the, one of the keys to keeping people, helping you uh, to get people through their struggle is having someone to, to give, to be accountable to. You can lose weight with a partner better than you can by yourself. Hey man, that donut. I, I, God no, come on you. If you don't talk, if you don't talk me out of this, I'm eating the whole pack right now, right now. Help me. Just a little call. Your partner say, you know what? I'm feeling the same thing. Let, let, let's beat this. Tomorrow we'll both be glad that we didn't do it. I preach long enough. Father, we come before you here in the sanctuary, online, on YouTube, wherever this message may be heard. We pray for the saints, first of all. We pray for saints who are struggling. We dealt with this same sex issue because there are those who have tried to discredit the scripture. There are those who have tried to judge the church. There are those who misunderstand altogether. And there are those who don't understand, hadn't read the Bible. 
So we lay out your word. And Father, I pray for every person in here whom I know or may not know who is struggling with the sin of sexual perversion, who have same-sex thoughts, attractions, cravings. I pray, Lord, that they will get this message and read it and deliverance. Oh, my God. You know, when, when I pray sometimes, I pray and minister. This is the way the Lord deal with me. Keeping your mind, the key to keeping your mind is saying what the Bible says. The key to getting delivered is saying what God says. You read the list. You say it. You learn it. It's going to break that spirit. Jesus breaks every fetter. Lord, break every chain. Break the chain. Even of that struggling young man who was here last Friday that did the post. His uncle called and apologized for his entire family. And his uncle said, I'm with Bishop Wooden. And with the upper room church. God saved that young man. Those women in that video. Save them Lord. Save them Lord. Let the word of God. And the atmosphere of holiness. Set them free. And God those all over the body of Christ. Deliver. Deliver. From all wickedness. From every malady, deliver, Lord. Deliver. We're getting ready for the shut-in. Deliver, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Break yokes, Lord. Break yokes. Break yokes. Break yokes. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. I pray that God, the God of the Bible, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will set you free. I speak freedom in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you praise the God of the Bible?